What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're putting the laziness and excuses aside and we're gonna finish this. This intake video has been plaguing me for the past couple months. Every time I've felt like I was about to do it, something came up or the weather's been absolutely horrendous. And here we are yet again in a string of absolutely horrendous weather. It is six o'clock in the morning right now, 6 a.m. And I'm awake because the weather is riddled with isolated thunderstorms. We're gonna be dealing with lots of rain over the next week or so, and I'm just tired of having this intake not done. So let's introduce you to the intake. Let's try to get this on. And this is pretty much a straightforward install from here. I just want to see because I've heard, you know, when you get the other videos, everybody's like, oh yeah, it, it made the exhaust grumble more, um, throttle response was increased. Obviously these things could happen. It could also be your butt dyno going off, but in general, the look of it and I have a feeling I will get a little bit more of a throaty um, noise on my intake and possibly the exhaust. So that's exciting and just the looks, like I said, the, the looks inside the engine bay are gonna be tremendously improved. I don't expect to have any show car engine bay by any means, but there are things that I would like to upgrade uh, maybe to carbon fiber. I would like to get to carbon fiber. So that's what we're gonna do. Maybe possibly get rid of um, that hideous eyesore. And I wonder if they make something to make this look I don't know. We'll see. I haven't really thought about this yet because this is obviously a daily driver. But then again, the last couple vehicles that I've dumped absurd amounts of money into were daily drivers. So this is the actual intake. It is a Rotofab intake. Now you're going to ask why I went with that. Again, um, visually, it was the one that appealed to me the most. They had another company, uh, Cold Air Inductions, I believe. That one was there, but I don't know if you can see this because of the glare, but just the box itself and, you know, in general, like I said, the way it looked. There's really nothing further to explain here. Okay. I'm hoping that's the last time I have to start looking at this box because it's really been annoying me. So this is obviously the main box. I don't know what the install is going to be like, but from how in the hell my kid was playing with rocks and must have thrown one in that box. That's cool. I don't know, but from the looks of some other videos, I have seen this design might be different. The other videos look like they kept the bottom portion of the stock air box and put that in oh this is cool man there's a hinge mechanism here so you can change the filter i'm assuming with just this screw on the top crazy crazy exciting though and we got oh hey that was a slippery mofo we got this bad boy. Obviously, it's meant to be kept looking nice because they really took the time, packaging-wise, to do the damn thing. Very cool. And then we just got a bunch of clamps. This looks like some sort of gasket, some screws, pins, probably something for the PCB, rubber couplers. So we gotta open this lid here. Get a couple more pieces out. There's another 
piece in here. This is a pretty decently sized filter. I'm excited about it. This should be what makes for some throaty noises. Okay, let's get some stuff going here. So these are all the tools that they're saying that we're gonna need. I, uh, I'm not gonna film doing every single thing unless something pops up, but like I can do little clips during and little clips after. I'll let you know what I did or what's happening. So I'm already not entirely sure what they're saying here. The two screws pointed out, pull the plastic hood latch extension straight forward to remove I don't know I don't know if I need that cuz I took all these off so wouldn't hypothetically that just come off so why would I I'm so confused there's no T15 here like in the picture but maybe I don't need to take that off because it came off. So let's not worry about that and deal with whatever the hell this is here. Okay, moving on. So this one says, we took all those off. Beautiful. Now we're gonna get this off and I guess it's just gonna be this little screw here. So I took this little, uh, Fastener off, and this got loose, but I don't know. It says remove the fastener, pull the air inlet duct upward and out toward the center. Upward and out toward the center of the vehicle. It says upward and toward the center of the vehicle. I don't know if that means it's got to go more but it doesn't seem like I'm gonna be able to get it out more than that. Using an eight millimeter, loosen the hose clamp to the throttle body. So there's gonna be a there. Back down there, there's one. So we gotta loosen those. I'm not sure if this is a typo where it says using an eight millimeter socket, loosen the clamp See illustration four right here, but this is not an eight, this is a seven. So that's a seven. So just keep that in mind. Nobody's perfect. So the design of this is stupid. I'm shorter than a lot of people. Getting in there with this hideous stupid box, this whole the whole design, what is that a sound baffling, whatever the hell it is, this thing sucks, but I gotta like stand up, reach over, I had my ass all up in the air like I was shaking it for money. This is ridiculous. So the next step's gonna be, you're gonna take this, you're gonna squeeze this bad boy here and you're gonna wiggle this off of there. And then, you're gonna pull this off of here and you're gonna start pulling out a little bit until you disconnect that off of the throttle body. Then, we're gonna lift this up because there's gonna be something attached weird there. So, from what it says here, it's still connected to a retaining bucket. Push the inlet elbow assembly straight away from the center line of the motor towards the passenger to disengage the bracket. So, there's a bracket there that we gotta do some kind of weirdo stuff with. Um, whoever thought of this fucking design, that's stupid. This stupid bracket here, you have to like put this thing up, straight up and down, major vertical, and then you have to like wiggle it up. What a, what an absolute stupid design. My God, now we're free balling here without this massive 
crazy box. Now you can actually see the motor. Whoa, look at it. It's a V8. That's amazing. Let's keep going. Next steps are to remove this and down there off of the actual box. Here's where this gets crazy again. Saying a T15 to remove these, but it's not a T15. It's a T20. So, again, whatever. So we got this off. We're going to take these two screws off. And it's also saying do not unplug the mass airflow sensor. So we're going to leave this plugged in throughout the whole um, setup. So gently slide the sensor straight outward and allow it to rest away from the air box. Do not allow anything to contact or penetrate the blade portion of the sensor. So let's read ahead because once I start pulling that out, that's that's kind of annoying that we're not going to disconnect that. I don't get it, but whatever. And then it says using a 10 millimeter deep extension to remove the air box retaining nut. And it's going to be here, down in this area right in there. So that bad boy right there. While removing the airbox, be careful not to put stress on any of the wiring harnesses or coolant lines. Double check to make sure the air inlet duct is disengaged. That's this. So this wins this never had to get fully removed. We just had to pull this out so it disengaged from the bottom of the box. Then lift up the box. Oh, so this is definitely different than the other one. We're just taking this whole biatch out. We're not even playing games here. This this thing is just coming straight out. I mean, this is this is going to have to come off of here. Like Okay, that's definitely going to have to come off of here because that's all part of one. Okay. So that's got to come out. We're going to take this off and then we're going to have to take that 10 off and remove this. Here we go. Not sure what I'm doing. What am I doing? I need to take this off. This is so sketch. Never in my life. So we're going to make sure nothing contacts. This is so sketch. This has to come up. This whole ass thing just come out. There's a little nub here in the back. Just be careful that uh, that that's gonna clear here. I guess that sits in that area, but it's just gotta clear this hose and then you're Gucci. So these were the next couple steps. We took this little tube here and we shot it through and we left this at like a two o'clock position per the instructions. Then there was this little flange type thing here. We slid that over and tightened them up. Then we put this hose coupler on here. We tightened that not too much. And right now, it's telling us to go to figure 11, which says that there's a 10 millimeter socket. Remove a bolt right there. Apparently, we're gonna be Putting, apparently we're going to put this somewhere with that bracket that's right here. So we're going to have to figure out what the hell all of these puzzle pieces look like now. Okay, so this part's a little confusing. Um, let's navigate it. We're going to take this silver piece, right? And what we're basically trying to do is attach that silver piece to this hole and this hole like that and then we're gonna the bolt we just took out right here this part is gonna line up with that so basically what you have to do is slide you're gonna slide that silver bracket behind here and stick the pegs through these holes with the notch piece part up on top 
if that makes any sense. I mean, it doesn't, then it doesn't, but I can't help you because I'm struggling to help myself at this point, you know? You know what I'm saying? Not sure why, but I guess there's a reason. But now it's saying to locate the number 20 bolt, and it's gonna replace the stock bolt for this piece here, I guess, because it's black. So you're not gonna reuse the stock bolt that we just took out here. So for this part, I'm gonna try to come in, put this, so that it's gonna sit right. I'm assuming it's gonna sit like that. One bolt. It's two, but replacement bolts now. Put that in here. Now there's something that this bolts to in the back. Hopefully we're getting into it. I think we are. All right. Okay, so these are tens. So we're gonna just go and tighten those down. Not crazy. Just enough. So that we're snugged up here. Just to make sure. We're still good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So inside of the packing, they have a foam strip thing that you're supposed to just work your way around this thing after the first little barb, so in that little cavern. Then they tell you to drape something over this. So I guess we're gonna start lowering this biatch inside. I'm gonna put this in here so that this doesn't get fucked up here. Oh, hold on. Ow, you bitch. It got me. Oh, so you really just want to make sure you get inside there and inside there does the studs have to come through and then you're gonna clamp this back up I just put this in here nice for now so that I'm not banging into that and risking some issue now I know we're gonna have to connect this stupid um, down there it's got to get connected to the box we're uh, we're getting there we're getting there so inside the kit, there's two little washers and nuts. So that's gonna go in there. And then there's a another nut. Can you see anything? It's dark, man. I got a cavernous hole down there. But that's that front locking uh, bolt area. So that nut has to go over that. So do not attempt to reuse it. It comes with these two. Um, that we're just gonna gently put in here and that's it okay again my short ass had to uh, stand there so we're putting the coupler on that part everything's tightened down now I also had to put um, the little grommet piece in there there's a nice hole in there so from right now 
what it looks like is we're messing around with these pieces now. Which is gonna be stuff for probably the PCV. Where did I put that tube? It says threaded nut area, which probably is gonna go like that. We just gotta see what's going on. All right, so this barbed portion here, that's gonna go toward the tube per the picture. Oh, align it just like that. Sweet, okay. Then we're gonna put it together like that. And then we're gonna pop that biznatch in there. Everything is super secure. Um, tightened everything up, tightened everything up. I might wanna put a little bit more of an angle, tiny bit upward, but you hear a nice click. That connection's made, everything's good there. Mass airflow's tightened, all the clamps and clips. Pushed down nice. Only thing left really is to put the cone in and then take uh, this off. I'll tell you something I like already that other companies don't do that I haven't seen on every company actually, I should say. Some probably do, but there's ridges here. Some companies they have you put these oily ass filters on and it's all smooth there. Like, what were you thinking? I think uh, LMI might have had that, KN, like, I've had a couple and I'm just like, hello, what are you, what, hello? They had to, like put IPA on that, like fucking adhesion promoter to try to make that thing stick. Definitely look a lot cooler in here. Um, I didn't want to have anybody miss out on this moment here. Just gonna go down. Get that hair out of there. So once I screw that down, I'm gonna give this a little wipe down. Um, put this back and then try to figure out for sure if I need to disable something. But I have to put the battery back together. Now we're complete. Just gotta put that battery terminal on. So I guess we're not complete. I'm gonna keep opening my mouth. Okay. Now the battery's hooked back up. We're complete now. So this is what she looks like. Everything's buttoned up nice. Good here. Got our filter in there. Rock solid. I love the angles, the geometry of everything. Brackets are all nice and snug. Looks good, the whole kit looks Freaking delicious. Let's get inside there and see if we have to reset something and start this thing and then call it done. Okay, so I'm not sure why it didn't uh, say the instructions. A couple of the other intake videos I saw have said this in the instructions, but to disable the air um, filter um, uh, life or whatever. So I don't know if this is gonna be an issue Apparently only the dealer could reset it or some nonsense, but I just looked again and I didn't even see it and it looks like it's about to start raining. So we're gonna just turn this on. Hopefully we don't have any issues. Okay. So real quick, before it ever started riding, I wanted to make sure that was disabled. Under the hood. Everything looks good. It's running. any codes popping up uh, but like I said 
just go in here you're gonna tap that and in the middle where it says enable now you just disable it because I don't need to know about my air filter uh, it's not gonna keep track of it and it's on me now just to make sure obviously if you pay attention to your car you're gonna know to change your air filter um, or clean it but that's it so I'm gonna take this for a ride everything looks good Battery's good. Everything's good. I don't really get that great gas mileage, and I definitely don't drive fast with this. So, who knows? But so far, everything feels good, nice and smooth. We're uh, I'm just gonna take it for a drive. So I always like to be transparent with stuff. I drove the car yesterday after the install because we had to run to BJ's. I didn't get a BJ, but we had to run to BJ's. So we went there. Um, on the way there, I had driven a short time. I stopped to get gas. And when I was pulling out of the gas station, now I'm in regular mode, by the way. And I did have the AC on, but when I was hitting the gas a little bit after that time, I guess because the battery was uh, disconnected the negative terminal was disconnected and it is a different uh, air pattern coming in I'm assuming that the mass airflow sensor was I guess recalibrating or something so there was that but it, it like had this weird um, hesitation almost in the uh, gas pedal or it just like bucked for like a split second hasn't done it since so I'm assuming you know when you're changing things and course when the battery was unplugged for an extended period of time for like an hour or more then you know things are gonna reset a little bit and, and have to get used to since then it's been totally perfect GPS I haven't connected. GPS connected thanks I haven't noticed anything problematic things I do notice definitely a little bit more grunt coming from the engine bay um, I don't know if it's just through the gas pedal that I noticed it, but it may be a slight vibration, but it, it could have just been more because of the resonance that I'm noticing it. Maybe more air coming in and, and maybe there's a little bit more air coming out quicker in the exhaust and it's making a slight resonance that way. Sound wise, um, like I said, the engine bay sounds better. It's definitely a little bit of a gruntier noise coming from there which I enjoy it's cool uh, exit wise on the exhaust side definitely a slight difference I don't feel like it's anything like oh you're gonna buy an intake obviously oh you're gonna make your exhaust louder I don't think that's the correct terminology okay I think what ended up happening here is the intake itself being you know the way it is the way it's designed I think my exhaust is a little throatier maybe not louder just it sounds slightly different it sounds a little bit beefier not not much so there's really not any other way to explain it <laughs> it's kind of weird do I feel satisfied with these mod do I feel satisfied with this mod um, as of right now yes and a funny story here, I'm going to link this obviously under the video, but I don't know what happened to the price of this intake. I had purchased this, I think sometime in February, right around February, January or February, it was around that time I had purchased this. This intake's been sitting in my garage for many months. I've been very lazy and then I had a lot of stuff going on and mostly just lazy, right? So it's been sitting there. I think I paid 400 something shipped. I, I can't imagine it was higher than 450. I believe it was something around that Shit. up. But I'm on the website now and it says 599. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Do I feel like for 599 it's worth it? I I don't know. That's got to be something where you solsters. For me in the 400s, I think it's worth it. I, I looked at the other intakes. There are some better priced intakes. There's some from cold air inductions that, um, there's other intakes out there. Let's just say it that way, right? But are they all created equally? I would say in, in many ways, yeah, they are. I think what ends up being your deciding factor is your budget. 
the look that you're going for, like with your build, with your engine bay and with everything, um, and the companies that you want on your vehicle. So for me, I don't, like I'm very particular when it comes to something visually under my engine bay, right? I hated that intake baffle. I knew that that had to go. I wasn't a fan of really the engine bay in general, the way it was looking. Uh, I think it looks a lot better now in the Rotofab box the design of it, how I can open it up and change the filter or clean the filter. It's just the simplicity of it is really nice, the design of it. The install was a little tedious. I think the instructions were a little bit weird. I wasn't super loving them. Uh, they were off a little bit with certain stuff as I explained in the video, but it's nothing that you can't figure out if you have basic hand tool knowledge and you've done installs before. Like I said before, and many times I've installed hundreds of intakes, literally, I'm not even kidding. Uh, this one, I don't know if it's just because of it being my first vehicle of this expense. Yes, you know, I'm not Mr. Richie Rich. This was a pricey vehicle for me. Uh, to spend on a daily driver. I'm cutting you off. I'm sorry. That's the way it's got to be. I don't know if it's if it's because of that or the other issue was the height of the engine bay. It was pretty pretty gnarly. Like you're sta you have to stand on top of things to reach things on the engine bay. Like I I've never had that happen before. Now listen, I'm not a super tall man by any means. I'm only five ten. But, you know, when you're sitting there and you're, you're trying to install something on your vehicle and I can't reach the freaking throttle body to take a, a, a clamp off, that's a situation. <laughs> that's a little strange, you know what I mean? It's very strange. So, yeah, I don't know if it's just a combination of that that made everything a little bit more tedious. That one point where I had to put that bracket on, I don't think it was explained as well as it could have been. But that's why these videos exist. Listen, I'm not a professional by any means. I screw things up 24-7. But the thing is, I'm honest and you know, we all, everybody that makes these videos, we're, we're pretty much all on the same page. We, we're here doing these videos because it helps other people that do the installs after us. You know what I mean? Like we're not sitting here trying to become rich from YouTube. Not at any point in my life will that ever happen. So I'm just here because I like filming. Now filming takes longer for me to do the install. So it's not great for me. You know, basically, I'm just sitting here filming for you guys. So, we'll see what happens, but that install wasn't that bad. It was just a little tedious, uh, and I think the instructions and the lack of uh, arm length played a factor for that for me, but I do not regret it. I love the intake. I think it's great. The truck ride's great. Uh, I'll report back later on in other videos if I think it helped at all with gas mileage. I think it's going to hurt gas mileage, to be honest with you, but we're going to find out. I'll let you know exactly what's going on, um, and that's it. So thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you are an OCD OG, I truly appreciate you. I'm never driving this road again. I did this because I was like, I needed a little extra time you know, to just record an outro. But yeah, that's my final opinion. Uh, hopefully this video is not too, too long. It probably will be, but that's the end of that. Oh well, get out of the street, bro. I'll run you over and that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Be safe.